Holy ah. shit. How can I hold it? I've never held that much money before. Oh. Holy cow. And why'd you ask for it in 20? <laughs> She's like, it's gonna be this thick. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, it's money I got. So much money, hey. Based off the intro, you can probably figure out this video is going to be about finances. And this video is going to be all about getting paid that hard earned cash, how to manage your spending and your savings. First, I'm just going to start off on the easiest ways to blow your money when you're in the military. Number one. No, not Subway, just ordering out food in general all the time. Number two, if most of you haven't guessed, alcohol. Number three, buying a bunch of stuff that you don't need. Number four, buying a big fancy car that you can't afford. Number five, this is something I've personally never done, but strip clubs are a huge way to blow your money. Number six, just buying stuff because you have money in the bank. I'm guilty of that a little bit, but I try for the most part to not let myself do that. I'm going to break down getting paid and how to manage your finances, but it's mostly going to pertain to just single airmen that are going to live in the dorms because that's the situation that I'm in. To start off, a majority of your paycheck is going to be something called base pay. What base pay is, is how much you get paid per month based off of your rank and how long you've been in the military. The base pay for me since I'm an E3 and have been in for less than two years is $1,805.40. The next thing on your paycheck is going to be BAS, which is Basic Allowance for Subsistence. I don't really know if I pronounced that right. Basically what that is, is your food and grocery allowance. I'm a single airman in the dorms, they pay me around $357 for this. But here's the catch. Since I'm a single airman in the dorms, they take that money right back out of my paycheck because we have a dining facility on base and that is free for me to eat at. So that's where the $357 that I get paid goes towards. And that's why not eating at the DFAC will drain your bank account faster than most people can imagine. Because it's basically cost free to eat at the DFAC, but if you go out to eat all the time, you're paying out of pocket for all of that food. The next thing on your paycheck will be BAH, and this is Basic Allowance of Housing. Now, since I'm a single airman in the dorms, they let us live in the dorms for free. We don't have to pay for any utilities, so we get water, electricity, heat, and air conditioning, which we don't actually control the heat or air conditioning. It's on a whole unit as the building. So we just, whatever they have it set at is what we have to live with. But that's all free. And then on my paycheck, I get paid about $7.80 a month for housing. So I don't really know what that's for. Probably like air fresheners and that good stuff. But that's a lot different if you're married and live in a house or apartment or you live off base. You'll get more money for that because it'll pay for your housing. Here they just put you in a dorm. So it's free, they don't have to pay you anything for housing allowance. Last but not least is COLA. COLA is cost of living allowance and this can vary based on where you're stationed, but it also has a bunch of different variables that tie in and I'm not gonna go into detail of that. Currently I've been making around 300 to $350 extra a month. It does vary, like I said, it can go up or down. So like I stated, I get a base pay, I get BAS and I get BAH and I also get COLA on top of that. I'm just gonna round everything and sum it up. I'm not actually gonna take the time to do all the math. Everything's just gonna be rounded to whole numbers to make it more simple. So after they take my BAS away from me, I make around $2,100 every month. And how we get paid in the military is we get paid on the first of every month and the 15th of every month. Roughly every two weeks we get a paycheck. So what you do is you take that $2,100 and you split it in half. So it'd look like I'd be getting paid $1,050 every two weeks. But like everybody back home in the States as a civilian, we have to pay taxes. We also pay social security. And then we have to pay for our health care. And we also have stuff like the Montgomery GI Bill, if you opted into that, that gets deducted as well. So after all of that stuff gets deducted from my pay, I make around $850 on the 1st and the 15th of every month. If it's anyone that worked a full-time job, it may not seem like the best pay ever because I delivered pizzas back home and I made around $900 every two weeks. A lot of people might think, wow, you made more delivering pizzas than you do now that you're in the Air Force, but that's when you first look at things and just go off of everything that's up front. You still have to consider stuff like when I was in college, and I was delivering pizzas and I was living in an apartment. I had to pay for my schooling. I had to pay for my apartment. I had to pay for all the food that I bought. I was making roughly $100 a month more 
back when I delivered pizzas than I am now. But I also am not paying $300 a month in housing. If I want to go to school, I don't have to pay for schooling. And like I've already stated multiple times, I'm a single airman in the dorms, so I get free food at the DFAC. So yes, initial pay, I was making more back home delivering pizzas than I am now. But then once you do all of the deductions, I was making a lot less delivering pizzas than I am now. Some expenses that I haven't hit yet are internet, phone bill, car, and car insurance. Just because we're in the military does not mean we get free internet or phone service. We also do not get a free car given to us, and we have to pay our car insurance just like everyone else. As far as a single airman goes for a phone plan, it could depend on what kind of phone you get and what kind of plan you get. A lot of people think it's going to be way different because I'm overseas, but I pay roughly $80 a month and I have an iPhone. So I pretty much pay what you would pay back in the United States. As far as internet goes, I pay $80 a month for my internet service and it's actually really fast. It's the fastest internet I've ever had. So $80 a month for fast internet, especially when I upload a lot of stuff to YouTube, like I'm making this video right now, $80 a month is a small fee for me to pay to get really good internet. You don't have to get internet in your room if you don't want to. Internet prices will also depend on where you're stationed and what companies supply your base or your dorms with internet. Most of the time when people get stationed at a base, especially overseas, they're probably gonna sell their car back home and buy a new car once they get overseas. A lot of people ask, why can't you ship your car there? And you can, I just don't know the specifics of it because I never went through it. I never planned on bringing my car here, so I didn't look into that option. But I know if you do look into it, there are ways you can get your vehicle shipped. I'm not 100% sure that you're guaranteed that, but I know that people have had their vehicles shipped to and from bases. I just sold my car back home and then bought a new one when I got here, which a lot of people, once they start getting a steady income, they're like, oh, why not just get a nice new fancy car or spend a ton of money? A lot of people when they come to Japan are like, ooh, I need to get a Nissan Skyline. But when you spend that much money, you're gonna have to make payments each month, which that's gonna come out of your ability to spend money and save money each month. So I suggest if you're a new airman and you get to your new base, don't buy a nice, fancy, expensive car. Especially when in the dorm parking lots, people don't treat the vehicles in the nicest way. And you would think that people in the military might be a little bit more respectful or not do something like that, but that's not the case. People in the military are just like anyone back home as a civilian because they were a civilian and they joined. It doesn't change them as who they are as a person. They're still just a regular person like everyone else. So buying a big fancy car might not be your best bet when you're a new airman. And that also ties into car insurance. If you get a sporty car like a Nissan Skyline, you're gonna probably be looking to pay a little bit more for your car insurance. If you get a cheap box car like I did for $1,000, your car insurance isn't gonna be that expensive. So now that you guys know how much you get paid and basically what most of your expenses are gonna be like, let's talk about saving money. The easiest way I've seen to save money is every paycheck, you set a certain amount aside in your savings to build up cash. From the beginning of the video, you saw that I had a stack of $5,000 in cash. And that was after I'd spent $3,000 on plane tickets and food and everything else in the United States. And after I had pulled that $5,000 out, I still had over $1,000 sitting in my bank account. So if you do the math, $3,000 that was spent on plane tickets coming home, $1,000 some dollars still in my bank account and $5,000 cash in my hand. That totals up to $9,000. And you wanna know how long it took me to save that money? Seven months. That's right. In November, I actually was broke. I had zero money because I had just moved here and I kept spending money and I realized I need to start saving money. So I set my mind to it. Granted that it helped I got my tax returns and that was part of that nine grand. If you deduct my tax returns, I had roughly $7,000 that I raised in seven months. And I run into a lot of airmen here that complain about being broke, or we don't get paid enough, or they just complain about everything to do with money. But the problem is, they don't think about how they're spending their money, they just want more money. Most of these airmen also eat out once or twice a day, being Burger King for breakfast, and then they go get Subway for lunch, and then sometimes they'll even get food after work. All right, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they order really cheap stuff when they go out to eat. So we're gonna say $5 a meal and they eat it twice a day. So that's $10 a day. In one month, you're gonna be spending over $300. On top of that, you're gonna have $80 for your phone bill, $80 for your internet, and if you bought a big fancy car, you're gonna be spending roughly $100 to $150 a month on your car payments. That right there alone deducts $610 from your pay. That's not counting the stuff that you do on weekends, 
So I don't know, I try to budget myself to only spend a hundred dollars a weekend or less. So that's anywhere from three to four hundred dollars that I spend a month just on doing activities on the weekend. And I know people that spend a lot more each weekend than I do. So let's say $150 a weekend. And a lot of this goes towards booze. I know people that have gone out on the weekends with people and they'll drop over $100 at the bar. And that's not counting all the food that they bought when they were there, that's just their bar tab. $150 every weekend for a month is roughly $450 to $600. That right there takes you to roughly $1,200. You also have to pay for your gas. I spend roughly $30 every two weeks on gas. So that's sixty dollars a month then on top of that a lot of people in the military smoke and chew now I don't know how much packets of cigarettes cost or how much can of chew costs because I don't do either of those I never have I never will but I'm gonna look up how much all that stuff costs now pack of cigarettes costs around five dollars and a can of chew costs around three dollars no I'm not huge on how people smoke or chew so I'm just gonna guesstimate this as well let's say you smoke one pack a week which I'm pretty sure that's not a lot compared to how much I see most of the guys smoking. And I know guys that will chew almost one can a day, if not one can every two days. So I'm just gonna be generous and say two cans a week, even though I know some guys that chew way more than that. So for chew, that's $6 a week. And for smoking cigarettes, that's $5 a week. So that's 40 to $50 generously in smoking and chewing. Now I know people that spend a lot more on that, but I'm just being generous to show you that this is why people don't have money because I'm being generous and at the end of this you're not gonna have much money to save. So after everything gets added up, I'd say that's around $1,300 of expenses you're paying out. I didn't even throw in their energy drinks, which is a huge thing that people in the military drink. I know people that drink two energy drinks a day. That's over $100 a month in energy drinks. That doesn't even count for all the pop that they spend money on or all the Gatorade or water. So once you add up just drinks, that's over two, maybe $300 a month. If you're only saving $200 a month, you're never gonna be able to save up enough to cover any of those expenses you may hit down the road. So here's how I suggest you save money when you're new to the military. As far as phone plans and internet go, I say do what you want with that because it's really hard to go overboard. It's not like you can spend $400 a month on internet and phone. Whether you go really conservative and get an old flip phone or you get an iPhone, you're gonna be paying anywhere from 50 to $100 a month for a phone plan. When it comes to buying a car at your new base, do not buy a big, fancy, expensive car. Airmen in the parking lot don't treat vehicles the nicest. Like I said, you'll get door dings, all that good stuff. So if you spend a lot of money on a nice car, it's probably not gonna be in the best shape when you sell it, so you're not even gonna get close to your money's worth for it. I spend $1,000 on my vehicle, and it does everything I need it to do. Don't go out to eat all the time. Yes, I started the video showing you a bag of Subway because that's what I just got today, because when I went to go get food after the gym, the DFAC had actually closed, so I didn't have time to go there, even though I could have maybe shortened my workout a little bit or gone earlier so that I could have gone to the DFAC. That was bad planning on my part, so I had to spend seven or eight dollars on a sandwich today. But for the most part, I try not to go out to eat because that's the easiest way to lose your money, especially when I'm the single airman in the dorms that gets free food at the DFAC. And don't smoke, don't drink excessively. If you want to drink, go for it. I mean, I've had a few beers here and there in the last few months, but I'm not a heavy drinker and I don't go out and club or go out and get drunk on the weekends because for me, it's just a waste of time because I'm already crunched with time to do everything I want to do. So going out and partying and all that is just not something I can afford to do with my time, let alone my wallet or my health because pretty sure most people don't like waking up feeling like crap and then wasting the entire next day. And I don't have an entire next day to waste, let alone time to feel like crap. No, I didn't hit everything you may be looking for. So if you do have questions, please comment below. Other people might be able to help you. I might be able to help you if I get enough questions that I can make another video answering I will do that for you guys if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way be sure to give it a like because that helps me out also subscribe to my youtube channel and share these videos thank you guys for your time and your support and until next time stop blowing all your money